today. I'm Stephanie Rubin, the Director of Collaboration Business from 2020 Technology. We're super excited here to introduce Zoom Phone to everyone, um, along with the latest poly devices that will work with your Zoom Phone. I'm going to initially here turn it over to our Managing Director, Kevin Scully from 2020 Technology. We'll Thank dive you, right in. <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, I want to congratulate Zoom for a phenomenal quarter. Um, I, guess, I think all of us wish they had bought their stock. Uh, Tony <laughs> Interbartolo, our resident Zoom expert, sent out the notice last night saying, bye guys, bye. <clears throat> so anyway, a um, couple things I want to share with you. Um, we're a Zoom partner. Um, and we're honored to be the first Zoom voice implementation partner. Uh, we started on this journey of moving PBXs to the cloud in 2013 and are looking forward to working with Zoom and making this a huge success. Um, so the one other thing to take away with 2020, as you can see from the picture, uh, we are the Navy SEALs of IT infrastructure. So I'm the guy driving the plane and Tony and Stephanie and James are the ones jumping out of the plane to help companies deploy uh, uh, voice telephony solutions. So thank you guys for your support there. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Josh Stanley, who's uh, with Zoom. He's going to give us an overview of their voice solution. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, we are going to spend about 15 minutes talking about Zoom Phone and then transition into some really neat and very uh, innovative things that are happening with the relationship between Zoom uh, and Polly on the phone business. Of course, we have a very uh, long history uh, of, and of products on the meeting side with video conferencing. Uh, and we have, of course, expanded that over the last couple of years into uh, the desk phone, uh, as, well, as well as the wireless headsets as well. So um, we are going to dive in some uh, really talk high level first uh, about um, Zoom. Uh, our vision, if you're not familiar with Zoom, is to provide a very frictionless video first unified communications platform. So again, that's a UCAS completely uh, built off a single set of um, a single infrastructure, a single architecture, all delivered in a single uh, application for the user. Uh, also, uh, from a management perspective, all a single pane of glass for administrators and IT managers as well. So um, we're known really well for meetings and video. What uh, a lot of customers are surprised of how far we've come along from our uh, telephony uh, environment, our phone system or PBX, as well as chat solutions as well. We can deliver a full experience for, for our customers. Uh, if you think about traditional uh, communications, uh, you know, what we typically think back is more of a voice over IP as, as we saw analog transition to digital, late 90s, early 2000s, where we had applications running in, in, into the data center. We saw that give way to the cloud where in most cases, we just simply relocated those applications out of our data center as a customer and put it in somewhere else's. Uh, in most cases, it's a lot of the same uh, applications, uh, maybe beefed up a little bit to be able to help support scale, but still uh, what I like to call is collaboration islands connected with bridges. So these are uh, separate uh, uh, sets of infrastructure, separate architectures. Uh, a lot of work has gone into tying them together but the minute I upgrade one of those um, uh, one of those sets of infrastructure, uh, we create issues for everything else that's tied to it, and we break those bridges as a result. And we've seen over the past maybe a couple of years a transition to a truly uh, cloud-based next generation platform where we uniquely bring in what we've been talking about for the past two decades as UCAS, um, but ultimately really delivering that from a single set of, uh, of architecture, single architecture, single set of uh, infrastructure being able to deliver this full set of uh, communication needs for users. From a platform perspective, when you think of communications platform, you think of typically these four or five items, uh, chat to phone, phone to audio and, and web and video conferencing, and then we scale out through a large webinar sessions. And what's important to understand about Zoom and why we're unique, uh, every vendor in this space has these items, uh, either from acquisitions, from partnerships, they, they, they create and integrate their solution where they have strengths at to be able to complete the full UCAS solution. The reality is by definition, if I'm partnering or I'm acquiring, I have multiple platforms and I do a really good job, even in some cases, uh, to tie those together and deliver them in a single application, a single management pane of glass. 
But what customers are demanding today is not only the fact that you can deliver all of these services, these different modes of communication, but deliver them in a way that a user can seamlessly transition from one to the next to the next. So I can start with a chat, take that chat and escalate it to a full phone call, take that phone call and with a click of a button, turn it into a rich collaborative session where I have full access to cloud recording, content sharing, video, all the things that you get and some of the things that we're experiencing here on this uh, call here today. Um, we took all of those things and the experiences of tying those together on that single architecture and expanded it into common space areas. Things such as Zoom rooms, where we can extend the value of a conference room, provide more value for the displays and connecting across location to location, but also in location as well with things like wireless sharing, things like digital displays and leveraging that space on that TV uh, as, a, as a digital sign in between usage. Things like um, um, uh, conference room connectors to be able to uh, repurpose and keep the existing hardware that we had in place and, and, and keep it as long as possible to make sure that we've had a, pre a chance to depreciate those assets as much as possible. And things like scheduling those displays to be able to use the technology, make it more accessible to our organization. And as we begin to start moving back into the office, we see the value of Zoom as a software solution at the desktop on a mobile device working really well in the conference room is very critical. Right? Uh, we extended the value of both of those into third-party applications through the use of developers, whether you chose to use uh, the app marketplace where we have over 500 pre-built integrations ready for you just to simply plug in two softwares together to work better. Uh, things like Microsoft, HubSpot, uh, Google, Slack, Salesforce, right? These are all integrations that we have ready and capable uh, just by simply having a paid license on each of those two services, you can now tie those two systems together. Um, or leveraging APIs, an open API platform that allows you to take and custom build these types of integrations either with these same softwares uh, or third party, uh, maybe uh, homegrown type softwares that allow you to customize the experience and have multiple technologies work better together for your users. Uh, ultimately, it's Zoom Phone that we're here to talk about today. Uh, it's Zoom Phone that really creates the value for the pre pre premise based or cloud based legacy PBX system that we pulled into the application. Um, I can't sit up here and say Zoom Phone by itself. Uh, is going to dominate the world. The, re the reality is Zoom Phone is special. It's unique because of the fact that it sits nicely in this full stack solution that was all built to work together, right? That's what makes our telephony platform unique. And it's allowing us to be able to do some very creative things to break down the barriers of what you see between these uh, different modes of communication. So things like being able to pull chat and phone together, being able to make a 911 call, emergency call, and use things like digital signage that really hasn't been done in the past or what hasn't certainly hasn't been done with one vendor, uh, requires multiple vendors to be able to make stuff like that happen. Uh, imagine being able to arrive uh, at a facility as an emergency worker and have every screen along the way, a digital sign pointing the direction of where the call was made from, right? That's the type of things that we're interested in innovating the phone system. It's not gonna come with a feature of the phone system, but how the phone system works with every other communication uh, solution uh, or mode of communication that's out there. Uh, we extend the value of this single application into a single management portal, making it easy and intuitive for administrators to, to manage, right? Uh, both during the deployment and then post deployment as well. But the real value is, again, that single platform. It's the single platform that allows the speed and the rapid pace of innovation that we have to roll out all the new features uh, that we have. Um, so long story short is ultimately it's a single application running on your device of choice that delivers telephony, phone, a robust, capable chat, Teams-based messaging solution, uh, and or video conferencing. You can mix and match these, roll out what you want, when you want it. Uh, ultimately, it's the customer's decision on how they want to um, uh, deploy communications in their environment, whether they do it all in a single stack Zoom solution or leverage where Zoom has strength and tie it into other communications that you have already deployed. The, um, the progress to date has really been mind boggling. Um, so uh, Kevin talked a little bit about our earnings report. The reality is a big part of that is uh, meetings, but even an extension past meeting is how far we've grown in a very short time over the past two years. Uh, we made and launched generally available in January of 2019. So last year, roughly about 18 months ago, we had over 350 features and enhancements to those features in the first year alone. You think about uh, the speed of which we're innovating. A priority for us is to innovate without disruption. So we don't want to affect the way your users worked yesterday. We only want to improve the way they work today and tomorrow. And that's how we really approach our, our deployments, right? Is to minimize the, the user experience disruption. 
we have multiple modes of, of deployment, right? So there's many ways you could deploy this out and we can absolutely customize this deployment to fit your needs as a customer. Um, we can leverage existing hardware that you have in place, right? Maybe you want to tie it into an existing PBX. Maybe you want to keep your uh, SBCs, your gateway and tie into your existing carrier. You can do that. We can customize that deployment to leverage what hardware you want to leverage uh, and either with a long-term strategy of replacing it or perhaps maybe forever planning on a hybrid strategy. We can certainly support that. Uh, or we can deliver a native solution where you replace the carrier, replace the uh, hardware that you have, run a true uh, next generation cloud solution, no hardware requirement, and, uh, and deliver that in over 40 plus countries. Uh, I think that puts us either two or three really high on the list in terms of number of countries we support. We're certainly not stopping there. We've got another six in beta already and expect that number to be up over 50 by the end of the calendar year. Uh, we're not interested in just taking the easy ones, right, and plucking them off the tree. We want to go after the really difficult ones. So two that are top of mind for us are both China and India um, that have really been a struggle for most cloud uh, vendors uh, and even carriers alike. We want to solve for that, make it easy for our customers. Our CEO loves to solve customer problems, and it's a big reason why you saw on the earnings report yesterday we're having success doing that. Um, in, addition to, um, in addition to supporting and delivering a, a very rich, capable software experience, of course, we know that doesn't solve for every use case. Uh, and we have great partners like Poly to be able to extend the value of our software into physical handsets uh, and into the conference room with physical devices as well. Uh, customers have responded incredibly well. We're now processing, I, I need to update this slide. It says a week, but it actually is now because we're growing so fast over millions of minutes every single day, we process of just point to point voice communications, right? That's outside of the meetings platform where we're doing uh, millions, if not billions of audio conferencing minutes uh, every single week and month, right? So customers have responded incredibly well. This is a list of um, many different industries, many different sizes, ranging from a couple hundred with pop sockets all the way up to, I think, NAB is the largest. National Australia Bank, over 25,000 employees, has over 12,000 users on Zoom phone. And we know large organizations like that take time to deploy out phone systems. Uh, and, and ultimately, we are now working with National Australia Bank to deploy out in their retail banks uh, as well. Two of the more recent wins, I think some of which were highlighted on press releases are Cardinal Health, over 10,000 employees. ServiceNow, two very recognizable names, also over uh, 10,000 employees. So this scales very well in the SMB, small business space, where it's simple and easy and intuitive and easy to manage, all the way up through very large organizations where we have very complex migrations and complex deployment strategies. Uh, from a connectivity standpoint, there's really two options, as I mentioned. Full native solution where we deliver 40 plus countries, one license, right? That's another real value add for Zoom is you can buy one license and deploy it out in 40 different countries, right? Think about the flexibility of, of just buying it, flexibility of deploying it. I no longer have to pick the right license for the right user in the right country. Uh, and then now the flexibility of being able to adjust on the fly when businesses change uh, and I grow in one country more than the other country, I can borrow licenses from one user or one location to the other. I don't have to trade those in and get a different license type. Or with premise-based peering, low cost options starting at $8 per user per month, where you now can replace the full feature PBX solution you have and just plug it into your carrier or simply integrate into your premise-based um, phone system and tie those two systems together on the back end to work like one. Very rich, robust, capable management solution uh, that includes rich uh, diagnostics and, and a dashboard will allow us to analyze and troubleshoot uh, any issues that do happen, either network related, physical device related. There's great information we're able to pull from poly devices to be able to tie back to, you know, is it a, is it a muting issue or a Bluetooth issue on the head, headset device or is it a, is an actual Zoom issue? Is it a network issue? So we can start to help, uh, help desk, help desk uh, troubleshoot the problem and identify it quickly to get that user back to work. There are five common areas or five pain points that are commonly brought to us from customers, and I thought I'd highlight a few of those for you. Uh, the first is, you know, we're struggling right now with COVID to be able to support our remote workers. Maybe our premise-based solution didn't scale for our external access the way we had initially designed it. Um, Zoom was built uh, to be cloud and mobile first solution that just so happens to deliver an amazing, rich, capable soft phone experience, as well as great uh, uh, extension through uh, partners like Poly to be able to deliver that to a desktop as well. So we can absolutely support that remote worker. We hear all the time about disjointed user experiences. I've got certain applications that do certain things, but they really fall short in terms of the full communication stack. Well, Zoom is a complete single application that was uh, built 
uh, to run off of a single platform that allows for that uh, ease of transition from different types of communications. We hear slow and out of date technology all the time. So the reality is we're doing monthly releases that we stagger with meetings to make sure that your users always have the latest and greatest functionality to put them at a competitive advantage versus uh, other competitors that might be running something that's 12 months or 18 months behind. Uh, difficult to manage, obviously just having multiple platforms, whether they're premise-based or cloud is really hard to manage. I'm logging in different places. Even when they are delivered from a single vendor, oftentimes I still have to log in or I have cross launches in the application of the other secondary application. So uh, ultimately, again, we were uh, centrally managed, built to be centrally managed and everything in a single pane of glass where we can start breaking down what I have to used to have to do two or three different times as I brought on a new user can do and be done in one place. Uh, and then the big one is help me save some money, right? We're in a very, very uh, unusual time right now. We're trying to re restructure the way we think about doing business and cost and management of that cost is a big thing. Uh, and we get obviously natural benefits of just simply consolidating vendors into one. There's a benefit of that. But even bigger than that, there are benefits of consolidating onto Zoom's platform, that which is truly unified, like right? truly single set of, of uh, single architecture that allows me to do things like pick up the phone and call into a Zoom meeting from a Zoom phone and have that be free from anywhere in the world. It's an on-net call for us. I can be joining a meeting in the US from Australia, call a toll-free number in Australia, which maybe might, might be normally six cents or eight cents or 10 cents a minute is entirely free because it's, it's a uh, number coming into the Zoom platform and it's all on our network. Right. So significant benefits of just consolidation and then consolidation into a single true, uh, true platform. Uh, final slide and then we'll turn it over. Um, so um, I'm asked constantly where Zoom excels and where we, where we really win business. And that comes down to really five key areas. It's quality of support. Uh, and it's really support of the product, right, and the way the product supports your users, but also quality of support post-sale. Um, we've been challenged. Our business grew from December to April by 30 times, right? Um, this would break most organizations, uh, and it certainly has challenged us in terms of how we support customers. Uh, but but we, we've, we've had to flex and we've had to scale as a result of that, both from our infrastructure standpoint as well as our support. We are absolutely committed to our customers. We think every single day, how can we solve better, uh, bigger problems for our customers? Uh, and a big reason why phone exists is, is, is that very reason when customers came to Eric, our CEO, and said, great, you did all this stuff for my, uh, my meeting solution, which was a struggle in the conference room. Help me solve for managing my phone system. Uh, easy to use. Easy to manage, a big reason that's the case is because it's a single platform running on a single architecture, right? Single set of infrastructure that we can now deliver a very consistent user experience as well as a management experience. Uh, another big one for us is transparency of cost, right? Transparency of cost is really important for us. We don't bill for things like cost recovery fees. We don't bill for things like administrative fees. Uh, we don't bill for things even like emergency calling, 911. Not only do we deliver not nomadic or a, dynamic 911 services and, and transfer the information for that user, but we also allow roaming inside of a campus to have integration into the network to be able to pull the physical location where that user is on the campus to be able to send that information to emergency services, right? We do that all as a part of the license cost. So uh, no incremental add-on for those things a lot of vendors have uh, for you. And then it, it, again, it's not about being secure. It's not about being innovative. It's about both, right? You have to figure out a balance between both of those. We have to be secure particularly in large enterprise organizations like ServiceNow, like Cardinal Health, right? Could you imagine uh, uh, them purchasing a solution that was not secure? Absolutely not. They have, have to make sure that that's secure for them. But also they invested in Zoom knowing that this product is getting better and better and better every day. And we are pushing the envelope in terms of creative and innovative things that we can do for our customers. Uh, the last thing I'll lead you with is, is a user conference that we have coming up here in, uh, in October. Uh, I encourage you to go out, take a look at Zoomtopia. Very, very unique opportunity this year. This is normally in a physical location in San Jose, oftentimes expensive to get out to, expensive to get a ticket, uh, and limited in, uh, in a lot of ways as well. Um, we're going to deliver this entirely virtual this year. I think it's going to be a great show. I've seen some planning go on, uh, and I think we're going to take all of that great knowledge and that experience that we deliver in person uh, and package that up in very virtual bite-sized chunks that allow customers to be able to join the sessions they want to do, right? So thank you very much for the time. Let me turn that over uh, to our partners in Poly, uh, and then we can certainly take some questions, I think, as we wrap up at the end, unless anybody has anything that's seen anything come in to this point. 
Nope. Okay, great. Brian? Josh, thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for, for taking the time to join us today. My name is Brian Amato with Polly. Um, we're going to kind of walk you through, um, through some solutions. But if I show you some, just some, uh, some stats on the next slide. You know, Polly's been around forever, right? Um, there's famous words, broadcaster from the moon's surface, right? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind was done on a headset that we make. So our technology has been to the moon and, and back again. We deliver end-to-end -end solutions um, from your huddle spaces to your conference rooms, right? So conference rooms are the big talk because of COVID, um, also at your desk, but then also, I guess, a lot of talking points is that flexible remote worker. Um, you know, years ago, it's all about, you know, what you hear through the headset or what you hear through the speaker phone, how clear it is. Yes, that is absolutely true. You have to be able to hear that person on the other end of that line. But what about what's going on in the background? Um, you know, if we're all working from our, our, our home office, also known as our kitchen table or the spare bedroom, um, and that background noise could be bleeding through and that could be very distracting. So before we get into a live demo, I'm gonna pass it over to Emilio. And Emilio's gonna take you through some of our services and some of our phone features that Polly has to offer with Zoom. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I'm Emilio Rivera with Polly. Um, just going to go through some of the devices that we have here. Um, as uh, Josh mentioned earlier, there's uh, 50 plus uh, devices and analog adapters that are uh, qualified and certified to work with Zoom phone. Of those, Poly owns 27 of them. So 27 different devices from analog adapters all the way up to our sound point and sound station uh, IP phones into our recommended products of the VVX 250, 350, 450 and then the Poly, uh, the Trio 85 and 8800. Uh, we do offer a, a broad range of devices to choose from. Uh, the Poly name means you know, high quality, secure and reliable solutions. Uh, for instance, the VVX uh, 450 has a mean time between failure of about 190,000 hours. So very reliable. Uh, segment leader, number one uh, provider of open uh, SIP phones. Um, and then we also bring uh, ingenuity uh, to the board, such as our polyacoustic fence that Eric is gonna demo a little bit uh, here in a few minutes, noise block and noise block AI. Users, uh, their audio quality or their experience with calling you. Uh, next. So just wanna show off some of the features that uh, both Zoom phone and Poly bring to the uh, table versus the hot desking. You see here you have the guest sign-in key. So this is me signed into a phone. Uh, somebody can walk up to it, hit the guest button, uh, enter their extension pen. Uh, when the phone comes up, you'll see I'm a guest is now signed in. So uh, when I'm is done, uh, they would just hit the sign out button and then it'll, uh, the phone will reboot back into the Amelia Rivera profile. Next. So, so, something I'll easy to add on this one is I, the value of is simply checking a box at the user level. If that device was registered to me on Zoom, I can check a box in my own personal settings and then reset that and allow that device to support uh, things like hot desking. Very easy. Yeah. Uh, Zoom phone directory. So this is a new feature that was just introduced in this last update. Uh, so this is the ability to see who's you know part of your environment. Uh, quickly find those people, um, and then you can also add them to your local favorites or your local contact directory on the phone. Next. Uh, call park, uh, very traditional feature. Hit the park button. You'll get an alert uh, on which, uh, uh, which park number, which orbit it's going to be on, uh, and then you tell the retrieving party uh, which, one, which number to dial. So in this instance, start 801, retrieve the call, call it good. Next, speed dials. Uh, so you see here, I've added Mark Z as my speed dial so I can one touch uh, uh, join into a call with him. Uh, but I also get his, of course, his, his status, his BLF status. So you can see here, he's in a call on the, uh, the right uh, screenshot. Next, uh, shared line group. Uh, fantastic feature, uh, shared line group. So uh, in this instance, uh, think of this as a large retailer. Um, these phones are part of the electronics department. So uh, next page, uh, incoming call comes in on the, the left screenshot. Uh, everybody's phone is gonna look the same. It's all gonna say that same uh, alerting. Um, I answer the call on one of the devices uh, and then you'll see the call on the uh, far right uh, screenshot. It just shows the little green uh, arrow pointing to the right. 
means that the, uh, there is a call active on there. So I go to the next screenshot. I can then put the call on hold. So uh, the right screenshot. On so you'll see there's a one call and then the pause symbol. So one call on hold. Uh, I usually get the question now of, well, what happens if you have multiple calls coming in? So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so here you'll see I have two calls uh, in the queue. One's on hold, one's active. Uh, the display on the uh, the middle screenshot, you'll see that once I put both calls on hold, uh, you'll see I actually have that, that number will increment to show you how many calls. I can long press on that uh, physical line key, and then I'll see uh, who's on hold, how long they've been on hold, uh, and then I can choose which call I need to answer first. Then next, uh, more features that are included uh, that are supported, uh, call flip. So a uh, fantastic feature. So for instance, say I'm uh, walking into my office once office is opened back up. I'm on my uh, mobile talking on uh, via Zoom phone, uh, walk in and uh, I need to, I wanna get into a Zoom room. So I can take my call and I can flip that call over to the nearest Zoom room that I have. And, and then now I'm doing video audio collaboration. Um, another instance, I get that call on my desk phone. It's end of day. I want to move it back over to my mobile so I can walk out of the office. So you'll be able to flip those calls back and forth. Uh, multiple lines, multiple line registrations. Um, this is a, an example, say a, an executive that has both a private line that he gives to friends and family, and then he has his uh, company line uh, that uh, his admin will answer. So um, another instance would be just if you phone numbers. Uh, because you're doing multiple jobs. You'd be able to uh, have all of those lines registered and you'd be able to quickly uh, answer those calls. Uh, the next, uh, the last feature I'll talk about is call delegation, so shared line appearance. Uh, manager, executive, boss, admin, however you wanna name it. So uh, a delegator, uh, so the boss can add up to 16 delegates. Uh, so he can, So that person can have up to 16 people answering calls for them. So they'd be able to make receive calls for that uh, delegator. And then with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Erica for the uh, acoustic fence demo. All right, thank you. Uh, so I actually just switched over to my video to show you what phone I'm joining on right now. I have the VVX 450 and I'm connected to my headset. As you can see, I have my USB connected here. And one of the great audio innovations we have built in is acoustic fence. So whether you're on your headset or on your handset, it'll create a bubble around you while you're on the call to take out any distracting noises. So I'm actually gonna play a very loud audio noise right now. Uh, inside my acoustic fence, you're gonna be able to hear it. It's very loud, very distracting right now. But if I were to place it outside of my fence, that noise is completely muted now. Now you should not be, again, you should not be able to see, to hear it. Um, like again, it's outside that bubble, so any outside noises that are going on, someone's next to you on a loud call, that won't be transmitted over to the call that you're on at the moment. And then I'll go ahead and pass it over to Dave now. How you guys doing? I am Dave Kowalchuk, nice to meet you guys. Today I'm gonna show you what it sounds like when you use the internal speakers on your laptop and why you should never do a Zoom call or Zoom meeting ever with your internal microphones. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what we sound like with our Blackwire 8225. So let me switch over to my internal microphones. And this is what I sound like when I talk through my internal microphones. Now there's no noise in my environment right now, but, uh, if I add just a little bit of distraction to it, let's see what it sounds like. This is what I sound like when I'm talking through my speakers on my microphone with background. As you can tell, it's hard to hear. So let me talk, let me close this. And uh, let me, oops, let me here. Now, this is that Blackwire 8225. 
There's no background noise, but let's go ahead and play the background noise and see what it sounds like. So th this is the background sound, with that same background noise, but on the black wire 8225. And to show you what that sounds like still, I'll flip back over to my internal microphones to show you what that's. This is the internal microphone, that background sound. Yeah. Now I'm back to my black wire 8225. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, Dave, I don't, uh, I don't talk through uh, my microphones on my laptop. I use earbuds. Guess what? I've got a set of earbuds. So let's come into here and I will play you what it sounds like with earbuds. Now, this is what I sound like when I'm using earbuds. You can hear me, but if I add a little bit of noise, let's see what happens. So that same amount of background noise now with my earbuds. Can you tell the difference? Thank you very much. Now I'm back. Thank you, guys. All right, Polly. Uh, anything else from you guys? Are we ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just a few things here from 2020 technology, just a little bit more about us and what we can do to help you through this process. Um, we are vendor agnostic, so we are partners with all the major vendors um, for UCAS, and we what we can say though is i know some of you attended our webinar last week zoom from what we feel and understand is going to be a huge major player or zoom phone especially in the upcoming months um as josh mentioned you know they've made huge strides with zoom phone and so we are super excited about what's to come and uh if you want to learn more please reach out to me directly i have uh my uh, contact information in the chat uh, but a little bit more, we also, if you're unsure about where you're, where you're headed or where you're going, we do offer assessment services where we can help you identify best practices, use cases, uh, day in the life scenarios. Um, additionally, return on your investment and network readiness to see if moving to a cloud solution works for you. Additionally, as Kevin had mentioned earlier, we also do the implementation services where we can document your call flows, we can do all of your provisioning and provide you on uh, day one when you uh, port and go live. We also offer managed services, so letting your team focus on their day job and leaving the moves ads changes to us. Uh, again, as Kevin mentioned, we are the first Zoom certified beta program integrator, integrator partner, so we're super excited to be able to help other partners and even uh, Zoom direct customers through their integrations. Um, and additionally, for everybody who's attending this webinar, we are offering a, a half day free ROI where we can come in and just sort of help you understand how much cost savings you can achieve by moving to a cloud partner. Again, my contact information is up on this slide and also in the chat, and you can visit our website as well for future webinars that we have scheduled. Um, we're gonna continue to have these because they've been pretty successful, and I think there's a lot of interest in what uh, Zoom has to offer, uh, and we have some exciting ones coming up here in the future. So I think our next slide is just questions and answers. Josh, let's see, what do we got? Yes, are there any final questions that we did not address. Well, thank you for that last one. <laughs> and I encourage you to put it in the Q&A if you can as well. Um, anything from any other presenters for sure, we could happy to help you out. Oh, and I just, I don't know if we see what Lindsay posted here. We are doing a, a giveaway of a, a poly headset and it was a random draw and it looks like Jess Craft is the winner. So Jess, I, I believe I have all your information from your registration, so I'll be reaching out to you directly to see how I can get you uh, your headset. So congratulations on winning. As for the first, I think it's 25 registrations, they will also get a gift from Zoom uh, for a uh, free lunch. So 
I will also be reaching out to those participants who were the, the first to register so we can make sure you get that as well. Did I miss anything? Any final questions? Okay, well, thank you all for joining. I hope you found this, this session uh, very informative and um, we look forward to working with everyone.